pivoting to refined products now, we want to always look at what is happening on the aggregate, looking at gasoline, jet, distillate, residual. So when you look at the way we always do it is the numbers that came out today and then looking at that four-week rolling average. So to, we had a, a nice little spike, again, at 15.785 million versus last week's 15.2 but that average is, is drawn down to about 15.085. So again, you're starting to see a little bit of that, that, that kind of normal pivot that we see, uh, especially when you look at 2019, when you look at where things are in terms of 17 and 18. But we did get that nice spike in, uh, on a seasonal basis. It's now above where we normally are on that week on weeks uh, level. But as we've been talking about due to more of a structural issue versus anything else. You, we still are seeing some of those shifts in terms of where that, that, that implied demand is coming from because remember, it's product supplied. So it's a matter of what part of the supply chain are we looking at to see where things are. So this is just telling us that there has been another big push going into and, and to the end consumer, which is going from that, that blending side or to the blenders and then to the racks going into the rest of the market. We do expect this to come back down to be just below uh, the seasonal norm. But as we've been as we've been saying, we don't expect to be to see a huge drop. It's just it, when you look at the normal, it'll be just below that that uh, that backdrop being held back by gasoline and jet, while diesel continues to be the big driver as we continue to see a lot of that bullishness. And uh, and one of the things that we continue to see, as we said earlier, you know, European shipments of clean products to the Americas have slowed so far, while diesel bookings have remained elevated. Obviously, diesel continues to be kind of that bright spot. And then when you look at European gasoline arrivals in the uh, in the U.S., they still are elevated, but the back end, when you look through the chain, is starting to slow down. It'll still be elevated for the month of October, seasonally speaking, but below where we have been just given um, some of the dynamics as gasoline builds have accelerated in the U.S. Now, when we look at distillate, distillate had a, 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 a small draw of 400,000 barrels. Uh, you know, bringing us below the five-year average by 16.1 million. And you can just see just based on that five-year average about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the lion's share of it is coming from pad one at with a, with a drop of 12 million uh, versus the five-year. There was a small build into pad one of 230,000 barrels. But you can see just when you look at the imports, imports still remain elevated. It's net, net down 2,000 barrels a day. Again, small. But when you look at the five-year average and what's coming into pad one, pad one still remains very elevated for this time of year, and that's going to continue, which it, when you look at the, the distillate storage situation, you can see just how far we are below the 29-year average, but we normally get draws that kick off, but we normally get builds heading into this. Instead, we didn't get builds going into it. Instead, we just went sideways, had some nice draws. Now we're starting to move sideways again. And when you look at how refiners are adjusting to this, where they're starting to increase that, that, um, the production of distillate, we have imports coming into our market, and we just have this balancing act because demand isn't really going anywhere. That's why we think we're just going to go flat from here. And it the comps get easier when you look at that 29-year average, but they're still going to be we're still going to be at the lower end of the of the backdrop again, supporting by uh, pricing, and providing some of that support into the crack spreads. And here's why: when we look at just where we sit, as we've been saying time and time again, we're just going to stay above the five year average. We're just, you know, there's going to be seasonally adjusted high peaks, you know, I should say new high peaks. And then even the lows will be above where we see that five year average. And that's going to continue going forward until we get a much bigger backdrop, if you will, in terms of, you know, where the pricing is, because <laughs> Road diesel's up seven cents, you know, up to three dollars and forty uh, cents a gallon nationally. So, again, that's going to put more pain on the consumer, more pain on the shippers, more pain on the industry in general, and it's going to have to be passed on with pricing in in just overall, which again is going to be some of that pressure points. 
And here's why. As we was, were saying, we expected uh, the, the, again, truck demand to go back to about 165. And here we are. Uh, we, we see just more more strength, not so much pushing us way back to the, to the highs that we saw, but just keeping us well situated at these, high, at these elevated levels. 165 to 170 is a very comfortable spot, especially when you look at loading uh, cargoes, uh, load availability. But it's just rates. When you look at that rate level, that truck availability remains main suppressed, which means you have to pay up to get guys to come through. But how much are you getting paid is, you know, there's some of this, this back and forth with rates. But with diesel making the next leg up, you're going to see those rates get pulled on. Because remember, uh, fuel is, is a pure pass through. So as those, as you know, essentially as those um, diesel prices get realized through the system, that's where you'll see rates continue to push up. And as we were calling out last week uh, for, for rail traffic, we, we started to see a bit of that acceleration on the intermodal side. You saw that recovery in grains. So we expect to continue to see farm products, that's grains and fertilizers elevated, grains in general going back up. Now, 2020 is a hard comp just because grains were moving uh, hand over fist. So again, it's going to be a hard comp, but still either be right at just above, just below that 2020, uh, seeing that strength. Uh, metallic ores and coal going to continue to move while motor vehicles remain kind of that overhang. Now, petroleum and petroleum products, we had a little bit of a bounce, then it, it kind of fell back down. If you just look at where things are situated right now based on pad three and pad one, you know, how does it make sense to get a Jones Act vessel? Does it make sense to put more on rail once you've kind of maxed out your allocations on Colonial uh, one and two? And then you, we did have... Uh, uh, SE go down for a, a, a temporary period of time, which again is going to, it's just a movement of, of refined products, which again, will keep that bid while intermodal had a nice bounce. There's still that labor shortfall, the chassis that we talked about. So we did get some of that intermodal increase. It's just going to be a mixture of how much of that can continue versus how much of it is going to kind of stay just below, um, you know, 4% below 2019, uh, 2020, but still above versus previous years just given demand and given where we see uh, the amount of, of cargoes uh, sitting uh, in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. I, I'm sorry, the, um, the West Coast. So when you look at Port of Los Angeles, uh, you can see that on Octo from October 10th through the 23rd, we're 77% above week on week. We're 19, 20% above uh, year over year. Again, we're setting records. We're going to continue to set records. Now we have nine days of, demur of uh, sitting out there waiting to get to a slip. It's the worst it's ever been. Again, again, just the the backlog continues to expand. And it's not just on the West Coast. This is a, a, a national problem which continues to reverberate through the system, keeping prices elevated, keeping costs uh, up, and again, keeping that bid for not only just rail, but also, and more importantly, for trucking, keeping that diesel moving through. Now, when we look at the uh, the temperature outlook, you can see that things still remain fairly above normal in the uh, uh, essentially from the Rockies over. When you look at Rockies going east, things are either near normal, but then as you get closer to the coast, they're now above normal. This just keeps people from using air conditioning. You know, it keeps you from using your heating. So it, it'll, it's this is more a comment of where natural gas is going to be in the in the very very near term. While when you look on the West Coast, essentially everything west of the uh, the Rockies, you're seeing uh, some of this tempered, uh, uh, just tempered weather, which just keeps things very consistent and not having to use uh, heat or uh, air conditioning to the same degree. So now when we look at gasoline, gasoline had a build of 3.26 million. We're now only 3 million below the five-year average. Uh, and you can see just the pace of where we're going. Typically, it's a mix. You know, when you look at that five, that 29-year average, we normally get a build this period of time. And then you start to get some of those draws as you go into, uh, into uh, Thanksgiving. But here, you know, obviously, it's the pace has been well above what is normal, which is just going to be something to watch as we go forward, and and just can we really get back to that seasonally adjusted high? And when you look at where production is, where refinery runs are, and where imports are, it's likely we could push higher. But when I, I, it's unlikely we set a new seasonally adjusted high, it's probably where we get just just a, above that level, and then really kind of go sideways 
ways as you get a much harder pivot from the refiners to try to create as much, again, distally as possible. Uh, the build was in, uh, the, the most of the build was in pad one to, with uh, 2.35 million. That's now only uh, just below 5 million, on, uh, uh, below the five-year average. But then pad three, pad four, pad five are now above the five-year average. Imports were up 98,000 barrels, uh, went, uh, went from 989,000 a day to 1.087 million a day. We were expecting, a, a, again, a little bit of a step down. Instead, we got that big spike. Uh, we got a, a fairly big spike up, realistically speaking, and we expect to see it now come back down. Uh, when you look at pad one, there was an increase of 148,000 barrels a day. Uh, we were expecting to go from about 743,000 to about 650, if you will. And uh, But when you look at pad five, pad five had a, a bit of a drop. Now we'll probably go from that 891,000 to about 700. We'll see some of that come off. Still remain elevated just in terms of where what is currently in the water and coming this way, which will, will keep us you know, fairly filled at, at uh, this point in time. And then when you look at the, the, the refined fuel exports to the Americas are, are set to, it's just going to be a matter of where they are. They're, they're going to fall but still remain elevated. So again, these are going to be things to watch as we go through the remainder of, uh, of October. Now, when you look at blending components, which again is, is more indicative of where we're going to be in, in the next few weeks, because when you look at blending and how much blending is being demanded, here you can see blending components had a huge spike. So gasoline built by 3.26 million, blending components built by over 5 million. So it was actually up 5.11 million. And so while gasoline uh, storage is only three, is 3 million below the five-year average, blending components is now 2.8 million above. And, and again, that's just kind of pointing to what is happening. And it also provides an opportunity for refiners to pivot even harder and take some of that excess octane at the top and really kind of focus on some of that oxygen and some of that carbon at the middle of the stack versus the top of the stack which again is just gonna increase the overall production of, of, uh, of distillate. And just to give you an idea, when you look at runs in general, so production of gasoline was down 1.28%, while production of distillate was up 20 basis points. We expect to see that pivot a little bit harder into the remainder of October, You know, just given where we sit. On a production level, it's fairly in line with the five-year average. We just expect that to move uh, to, and move a bit to, uh, further to the right. Now, when we look at gasoline demand, so taking Gas Buddy data, so Gas Buddy data, U.S. weekly gasoline demand fell 0.9% last week and was 0.5% uh, lower than the four-week average. So you can see again we're we're kind of stabilizing here, but according to Gas Buddy Sunday, uh, gasoline demand was that was down 2.6% and was 0.6% above the average of the last four Sundays, and Monday was down 4.9% and was 5.1% below the average of the last four Mondays. So now when we look at that week to date, because Sunday was, uh, Tuesday was fairly stable, but between Sunday and Tuesday, U.S. gasoline demand is now at the lowest in over four months or since the week of May 30th. So it's just moving further into, again, that seasonal norm where you, you have May uh, coming in, you get the ramp into summer, and then you start to see that, uh, that peter out and then slow down as we go through October. So again, it's just going to keep us moving it, fair, when a fairly tight level, but just down and to the right when you look at the, just again, that, that seasonal norm. And this isn't helping. So when you look at gasoline prices, gasoline now reached three dollars and nineteen cents a gallon nationally. That's up almost uh, over a, a, almost a penny and a half. And it typically is the, the point at this at this particular particular juncture. You normally have this coming down, not going back up. So because you you're pivoting from summer grade into winter grade. And it, it, it's, again, just continuous to be strong. And it's now over a dollar more than it was a year ago. So, I, again, as the consumer continues to struggle, as we keep seeing these pressure points, especially on the inflation side, that's where we, we're going to continue to see a lot of these pressures. And then when you look at, uh, at diesel prices, we're at $3, over $3.47. We went up $0.07 cents week on week. So it's just the amount of pain that it that this is going to bring to the consumer, to the industry. I, again, it has to get passed through. 
And unfortunately, this could get much worse because we're not even using heating oil yet. And heating oil is at this point essentially road diesel given the new regulations, which is only going to make this tighter, which is only going to drive up pricing, not just for the for the diesel going into the truck, but also the diesel going into your home. So we're, we're, we are facing a very dire situation when you look at pricing to the consumer, which as we continue to highlight is going to be that overhang on the uh, spending side. So now just putting the blending components into perspective here, now we're at a uh, the second highest we've ever been on blending components with the only higher being uh, 20, um, uh, essentially the highest is uh, what uh, essentially 2020 came down, but uh, it, was, it, was, it was right at about 2016 is that level. So again, we're, we're setting that new record for the amount of blending components sitting in. Um, and I, just given the shifts in general, we expect this to break to new all-time highs. Now, when you look at gasoline uh, demand going over the last 15 uh, years, you can see we're right near the highs. Uh, the only time it was higher was 2019, uh, 2017. And then, uh, but when you look at just kind of the peaks and valleys, you can see that it, them for 2021, uh, for the most part, you're getting these flat spots instead of having these sharper peaks and falls, which is more indicative of kind of this delay that we're seeing of trying to move some of this product through the system. And that's why we, we, we're relying more and more on that four-week rolling average, just given some of the, uh, the issues at the supply chain level. And here's where, when we look at what uh, times that have been above, here you can see 2019, and when you look in terms of uh, 2019 as well as uh, 2017, we're just barely higher. And then you can see that there's a spike up and then a spike back down. It's just the spike down is gonna come a bit sooner. So that's where, again, we're gonna see some of this tightness in general coming back down. And, and again, not, not going below 2020 numbers, but just going below kind of what is normal just by that, that small amount as we were losing that weekday traffic versus the weekend traffic. And then when we look at, that, again, that weekend versus weekday, uh, the, there's, we've had that steady, nice little increase to workplaces. Transit stations have been fairly flat. Uh, but that residential continues to be elevated, which again is just keeping that weekday a bit muted versus weekend. And we continue to see some of those slowdowns on the retail side, on the grocery pharmacy store. You're starting to see again, people pulling back a bit on spending, government transfers are slowing as we'll talk about in the econ show. And then on the Apple mobility side, you can see that we're starting to roll back over. But when you look versus 2020, it's very much along seasonal norms where you kind of get that run up. And then as we, you progress through October, you get a fairly steady move down. The only the difference this time is October into November, you are seeing a spike in COVID in 2020. You're not seeing those same increases. So it's really going to come closer just down to the baseline versus being above it. Then when we look at propane, propane had a draw of 630,000 barrels. Uh, it's it continues to be a very bullish backdrop. Uh, you know the five were 18.4 million below the five year. This is typically when you start to flatline. It's just you can see that we're flatlining well below where we normally are versus the last five years, which is concerning given just where the demand is on the on the export side and how we've had an increase in local demand, especially versus the last five years. Uh, draws were essentially across the board, except in pad two with a small build. But again, there's just going to be a very bullish backdrop as we head into the end of the year. Now, days of supply, as we were saying, is a little bit delayed. So we're right back within the, the bottom of the cloud, but we're going to drop back below that over the next um, next two weeks. Then when we look at vac uh, vaccinations administered, you can see, as we were saying in segment one, you're, we're getting that nice acceleration in Asia, which will help offset, uh, you know, even if you do get a resurgence, people won't uh, have the same reaction, just given the, um, the coverage from either already having it and having the antibodies, or at least getting vaccinated. And then when you look at just some of the developed markets or the places that really started first, you can see that the pace of, of, uh, of vaccinations is really slowing. And it's really just given as you're getting up against kind of where people are like, look, I'm never going to get it. Or I, I wanted it. I already have it. And now you're actually starting to see uh, in a, an alignment for boosters as we go through the remainder of October. 
Now, when you look at Jet, Jet had a nice little bounce. But when you look at the seasonal level, there's typically a bounce at this point, uh, especially when we're comparing it to 2016. When you look at 2019, you get that bounce up. Uh, we're, we're, we're above 2018, but just below where we are on the other four years. So again, we expect to see this come back and, and again, not make a new low, but just come back into that kind of noise that we've seen, which is just below, let's call it that 1.5 million barrels a day. The question is going to be, where is that demand overall? Because remember, kerosene can also go into the Disty pool and, and you, you could see some of this coming through, some of it getting sold. And you know, when you, so when you look at uh, storage, storage was down 1.32 million barrels. Uh, but it, it's now 2.4 million below the five-year average. But when you look at it in comparison to distillate, there's some flexibility in terms of where this is going to go and where you're going to get that best margin. Especially when you look at, you know, on a seasonal basis, things are starting to slow. Europe is starting to, to come back down. You know, North America is starting to flatline. Uh, Asia is starting to flatline. You know, rest of world as we come and look forward, we continue to see some of these reductions in overall activity more along the lines of just seasonal norms. I know that uh, international travel is supposed to, uh, you know, a lot of those bans are set to expire the end of November. So it'll be interesting to see how that picks up because the average number of departures per day increased by 1.13% and departures in China and India led the growth, China obviously being that golden week. Now, globally, the passenger flight schedule for the 11 weeks ahead declined by 3.2% since last week. That is the largest decline that we've seen. But when you go out the next three weeks, uh, you know, 11 weeks, you're already in December, which again is just where you see some of that, that drop. And it's just a question of how much of this is just due to this overexcitement for new bookings versus where things are in Asia versus Europe versus the U.S. as we come kind of uh, slow back down to normal. And this is where you're seeing it when, again, as we've been talking about, we are just following uh, that normal seasonal trend just at a reduced rate. And we don't see that stopping, even though even when we get international travel coming back, we don't expect to see a, this big surge back to 2019 levels. We expect it to be still well below that. Uh, I shouldn't say well below, but about 800,000 passengers a day off of that norm versus 2019. And then rounding it out, when you look at what is happening in the weekday versus weekend, you know, when you look at the weekday, we're a zero to 5% better than normal. Weekend, we're about 10 to 15% uh, worse than normal. Uh, recently got a little bit better with only 5% below normal. But again, we, we still expect to be much closer to that 10 to 15% below that typical level on, um, on uh, uh, weekdays. So now in the next segment, we're going to look at a mixture of what happened in OPEC, what happens in the physical market, and what is happening in the futures market, and how they may differ, and what are some of the ways to interpret some of these movements, especially when you start looking at refinery throughput. 